Hi everyone, I wanted to release an update into the, the Route 91 Harvest Festival shootings. So the Supreme Court had to order the LVMPD to release video and audio evidence they have covered up and hidden. Little by little, the LVMPD has picked and chosen what to release, and naturally, they have released the least incriminating evidence. But a sharp eye and an alert ear can see little pieces of evidence indicating a cover-up located within the footage. Coming up next, we take a look at footage of yet another officer indicating a shooter halfway up, which is at least 13 floors and 117 feet lower than the 32nd floor, which was the location of the staged crime scene and the murder of the patsy, Stephen Paddock. We will look at footage released of the security guard Jesus Campos faking a leg injury. And last, we will visit a channel we haven't looked at yet that talks about a gunshot being fired by an officer at the crime scene, witnesses disappearing, and more. For anyone that didn't catch that, um, you can just rewind it back if you need to, but the officer said that's coming from about halfway up. Hey, you guys stay in here? Stay here. You guys stay here. Stay. Where the fuck is security? Okay, let's just pause there for a moment, folks. So this is really bad. Uh, what you see here. Now I've been in security uh, plenty, and I've worked at resorts and stuff just like the Mandalay Bay. And normally, during any emergency situation uh, involving the police, medical, or fire, a staff member, usually a, a security guard or a manager, like the MOD, it could be anybody, will be at the door to greet the emergency responders when they arrive, whether it's fire, uh, uh, medical, or police. So you guys can, can watch this. Um, on your own if you want to. You can see the name of it at the top of the screen and unfortunately the officer continues to walk through the building for some minutes screaming for uh, somebody to direct him and, and screaming for security um, to direct him because nobody greeted him at the door uh, which is normal protocol to direct him. Here's the top of the Mandalay Bay here. You can see it in this picture and a good thing to, to remember and to use as a reference is these the, we, here on this screen they look gray, these gray sections, and then of course the top of the building is up here. But we're going to start from this gray section, we're going to count down one, two, three, four, five. And on that sixth one right here you can see the broken window, and then another broken window over here on the other side of this gray section. And that's the 32nd floor. So I want you to bear that in mind when we watch this footage, and I also want you to keep another thing in mind. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm a gun expert, because I'm not, but I do know guns. Uh, I've shot in plenty of guns, I've done plenty of hunting, I know guns, I know weapons, but that that's not, it doesn't matter. All the gun experts agree, and I agree with them, that even with a flash suppressor, at nighttime, from an elevated position, for example, like the 32nd floor, you would see some kind of muzzle flash. Now, also keep in mind that none of the weapons that they claimed were Stephen Paddock's had flash suppressors on them, which means that if Stephen Paddock actually was shooting out of the 32nd floor, 
we would have saw a ton of muzzle flash and we saw zero. We did not see a single muz muzzle flash come out of that particular uh, room on the 32nd floor. In fact, we didn't see any muzzle flash come out of any windows on the 32nd floor. <laughs> Then we also heard that, like I said, that gunfire coming from much closer, um, from, a, from at least a second shooter. So we know from that footage right there that there was at least two shooters at two different ranges, one from at the Mandalay Bay and one um, at a much closer range, roughly about half, half as close, uh, which is consistent with um, scientist and long-range gun shooting expert Mike Adams uh, as indicated in his forensics acoustics analysis that we took a look at in my first documentary. Okay, this next footage is really, really troubling, folks. Uh, just really disturbing. Um, you can see the name of the video again at the top of the screen. Uh, in this footage, Hayes, security guard Jesus Campos clearly fakes a uh, being being shot by a firearm. Um, and I can say that with definitive uh, assurance, I guarantee you, and anyone who, who has seen somebody shot by a firearm will agree, um, if he were shot by a firearm, even in the leg, uh, he wouldn't be doing several things. He wouldn't, number one, he wouldn't be walking around pacing, okay? I say that you would see blood everywhere. Uh, there would be blood on his leg. There, there would be blood on the on the ground. Now, some people have tried to argue with me that uh, some gunshots you don't see blood. I disagree. I've never seen a gunshot where you didn't see blood. But let's just pretend for a minute that okay, somebody got shot and for some strange, miraculous reason they weren't bleeding. As odd as that sounds to anyone with logic and intelligence. So, even still. I guarantee you that they would be laying on the ground pretty much crying or gritting their teeth or praying to God or doing something, but they wouldn't be walking around uh, like this guy is, number one. Number two, um, if, if they'd been shot and let's say that they were moving around and they weren't on the ground because they were in shock or uh, they were full of adrenaline, for example, even still, Again, uh, we'd see a lot of blood. So I've seen, uh, I don't really want to say what I've seen, but but still, we'd you know, take the scenario where uh, somebody was, was shot and uh, was full of adrenaline, for example, so they didn't go down and they kept moving, but still there'd, there'd be all that blood and, until they got weak from losing blood. I guarantee you folks, and anyone again with just a little intelligence and just a little logic, or even a little like combat experience or law enforcement experience, or you know anyone that's seen people shot before, and I'm not talking about a BB gun or a pellet gun, I'm talking by a firearm, knows that this guy is clearly faking it. Clearly. It's not even a, a good limp, it's a really fake limp. No bandage visible. If he were hurt, he'd be on the ground or leaning up against the wall. He'd be doing something. He wouldn't be pacing, though.
So now he's going to start moving around again. He's not in pain. He, if you're in, you got shot in the leg, you're in pain. He's not in pain. You, if you were in pain from being shot in the leg, you're not going to keep moving around and walking around. And the only scenario where you'd be full of adrenaline and moving around is if you're in like a combat situation or something like that. There's no pressure to him right now. He's got people surrounding him. He's got police surrounding him. He's not full of any adrenaline. This is completely fake. Completely fake. Furthermore, wouldn't you be getting uh, medical attention? They claim that, that, you know, he received some kind of medical attention. I don't see him receiving any medical attention. I don't see him going down to the lobby to meet with, with, with EMTs, or I don't see EMTs coming up here to meet with him. Then again, if they looked at him, they'd probably laugh. There's no blood. They'd be like, where's your injury? Again, he continues to move around. As, as you can see, there, there's no pain. He's not in pain. You can tell he's faking that limp because he it's an exaggerated faked limp. It, he's not if you're limping you're you're what the limp is caused by you trying to not put weight on that leg. He's putting just as much weight on that so-called supposedly hurt leg if not more than the other leg which clearly indicates a fake limp. Jesus Campos, you are a sorry, sad case for for an actor. What a poor actor. What a disgrace. Now, folks, get a load of this. I want to tell you one more thing before we switch gears and switch on to something else. Switch to something else. Hey, Jesus Campos, who in my opinion is, is just an uh, unintelligent kind of... Uh, like a like a puppet you know he was being told what to do he was being controlled well he's we tried going to his house and stuff and there was some strange mysterious armed guard there that wouldn't let anyone talk to him now he's disappeared nobody knows where he is now nobody can find him I can just about guarantee you folks that Jesus Campos was disposed of catch my drift of what I mean by that. He was disposed of. We're never going to see or hear from Jesus Campos again. The people that were behind this disposed of him. He's been disposed of. And I can't say that I'm sorry to, to know that or to hear that. Um, in a previous investigative documentary, I talked about how um, the first officer in Hancock, um, the one whose body cam was conveniently turned off or not present, um, shot an already dead paddock in the mouth with his pistol, which would account for the two inconsistent puddles of blood, one puddle of blood uh, being older and fully soaked in, and another put of puddle of blood being more fresh and not yet fully soaked in, which was caused by Hancock blasting uh, Paddock in the mouth with the pistol. Um, Paddock was wasn't already dead as a result of shooting himself. He was murdered 
Um, that room was a staged crime scene. He was a patsy. Let's take a look at this video. After journalist Doug Papa broke the news. I do want to interrupt one last time just to let you guys know this guy keeps referring to Doug Papa as a journalist. That's not really entirely true. Uh, Doug Papa, first and foremost, is a veteran uh, retired police officer and investigator. So if he does any journalism now, it's not really his, his uh, what he's known for and, and what his life experience was in or anything like that. That LVMPD under Sheriff Kevin McMahill's inexperienced wife Kelly had been put in charge of Stephen Paddock's crime scene instead of the department's homicide squad. Doug Papa got an ominous email from Detective David Gorris, who requested they talk on the phone. A little bit further down, it said that you reached out to the, or somebody reached out, contacted the LVMPD Homicide Division, um, and inquired who was handling it. They were told that the force investigation team. Do you remember if it was one of the ladies that answered, like one of the, the front? or if you spoke to a specific detective or sergeant or lieutenant? You know, sir, I, I, I can't get into specifics. I don't do that. The LVMPD didn't seem thrilled that journalist Doug Papa had exposed the obvious conflict of interest that they appeared to be trying to hide. And after the detective's unsuccessful attempt to find out where Doug Papa had gotten the information, the captain with the dead eyes of a sociopath was transferred off the Stephen Paddock investigation. I listened to the tapes from the uh, October 1st massacre, and I hear one of the SWAT officers, Zebra 20, come on the radio and tell the police dispatcher that one SWAT officer did fire. For weeks, Sheriff Lombardo didn't say a word about an LVMPD officer firing gunshots in Stephen Paddock's room. Did police or security guards uh, fire any shots uh, any time during the encounter? Um, during while he was discharging his weapons? Yes. We are not aware of that. An LVMPD officer fires a gun in Stephen Paddock's room and no one in the Vegas media besides yourself is covering this? Why? I don't know, okay? All I know right now is that this investigation, something appears to be amiss in there. Why are they trying to hide it? And if they're willing to hide that, what else are they hiding? What else are they lying about? And what other things are they going to spin? For weeks, Doug Papa tried to alert local media to cover the story, but they wouldn't. So he broke the news in the Baltimore Post Examiner, and then other newspapers followed suit, forcing Joe Lombardo to admit that an LVMPD officer had fired a gun in Stephen Paddock's room. He just neglected to mention that in any of the many press conferences he'd had. Why had the sheriff waited almost a month to reveal that an LVMPD officer fired his gun in Stephen Paddock's room and only admitted this fact after being called out by journalists? The LVMPD has been sued by seven news organizations for failing to release the 911 calls and public records from the night of the Vegas mass shooting leaving many to wonder if the department is telling the truth about what really happened. Okay, here we get into a little bit of hearsay. Um, we just don't have the evidence to support this like like I've presented in, 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 um, prior to this. You know, we, when we look at uh, police footage, you know, police cam footage and witness video footage and audio and stuff like that and we see muzzle flash and stuff like that that's solid evidence folks that anyone with logic and intelligence just can't argue with this is uh more, more gets into hearsay but it's very troubling uh we're gonna listen to reports that um witnesses who submitted um they were in, interviewed by law enforcement and fbi uh, who wanted to see their video footage, for example, to review it for investigative purposes. What they did was they deleted the, the, um, it, the footage out of the people's phones and devices and then gave it back to them uh, deleted. 
Uh, and then I also, and that does not surprise me, I also hear uh, reports of witnesses disappearing. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, we just need evidence. We need more evidence than, than reports and hearsay. But let's let's take a listen. I think there's a lot of people that knew people at the concert. They felt terrorized. Sheriff Lombardo comes out and says, oh no, now we looked at everything again, and it was that the timeline was wrong, and now we think that Campos was shot just about the time the gunman opened fire. So now the LVMPD has changed the timeline a third time, um, and, uh, well, here comes the LVMPD, actually. The security guard, Jesus Campos, he was supposed to talk to five members of the national press, and he just mysteriously went disappearing, vanished. Nobody knows where he is. Things are just getting stranger and stranger in this case. I've had sources literally tell me, I'm scared for my life, I can't continue talking. There was a report that just came out the other day that said that concert goers and witnesses of the shooting, when they collected their phones that were confiscated by the LVMPD, they received their phones and it was completely scrubbed. Like they didn't have any pictures, no video. Law enforcement made an effort to make sure that the pictures and the video of the event were taken off people's cell phones. Why would they do that? What are they trying to hide?